Case number one, a 35-year-old woman with a vulvar mass and on CT scan, it's a 15 centimeter soft tissue mass going from, from beneath the vulva down into the underlying perivaginal pelvic soft tissue. And there are several slides here I posted. Um, so let's see uh, what you guys thought about this. Let's look at the first one. Okay, big big slabs of tissue here. Who uh, Who wants to take this? And you don't have to describe, you can just say what you thought or, or what your differential is or what stains you'd want, whatever you like. I can try. So I think this uh, overall looks like a hypocellular lesion with mixoid background with abundant vessels. Uh, the cells looks quite uh, bland looking with no mitosis. Uh, based on the location, I think the differential diagnosis could include the aggressive angiomyxoma. Uh, others include some um, angiomyofibroblastoma. Very good. Yeah, that's the, the question that always comes up is we get a bland spindle cell tumor in the, um, the uh, anogenital region or the, the genital region, um, particularly in women, but also men too sometimes. And, and then we wonder, is it it's one of those weird benign genital stromal tumors? And these tumors can be challenging because they have a lot of overlapping features and they all occur in the same site and immunostains depending on the case can like have a good bit of overlap and so um so people have a good bit of angst about about these tumors but you correctly identified this is actually what used to be called aggressive angiomyxoma but the other name i think that's more preferred now is deep angiomyxoma and i like that term and when i was dr weiss's fellow she she was a big fan of that too she said you know the thing is jared that these these lesions are are called aggressive because they can recur and they are large and infiltrative but they're not they're not like rapidly growing you know malignant behavior aggressive they just can grow back sometimes because they're big and they infiltrate the pelvic soft tissue and therefore they're hard to remove okay it's hard to get the entire thing out because uh, they can infiltrate into the fat like you're seeing here and so because of that they can be hard to remove now i think one thing i struggle with about angiomyxoma is there's not like any one single feature that makes the diagnosis to me it's kind of a constellation of features um, and I feel like when you have um, uh, entities like that, it can be a little bit harder to learn. And also they're relatively rare. Um, I've only seen a handful of them. And so this is, I think, the very best example that I've seen probably. All right. I will point out one thing before we go any farther is even though the name is angiomyxoma, to me, myxoid stuff is like blue, right? Like really blue, like myxofibrosarcoma. The examples of this entity that I've seen and many of the pictures I've seen don't really look that blue. It looks more to me, to my eye, like edema almost. It's pink collagen. So there's a kind of a fine collagen background with a lot of extra substance. And I'm sure that there must be some myxoid there, but it often has this kind of pale look, not quite so blue as like a true like myxoid thing. So I feel like that the name sometimes makes you imagine it should have a bunch of of myxoid, but to me, there's often kind of an edema sort of look. So let's first talk about the, the angio part, the vessels, okay? The one key about the vessels is they range in size a lot. They can go from really small, tiny vessels all the way up to big, thick-walled muscular vessels, and we see that here. Here's a thick-walled muscular vessel with some intimal uh, hyperplasia or intimal reactive change. Here we've got vessels that are a bit smaller of varying size and shape. And then all the way down to little tiny, you know, capillary sized vessels or venules, little small, very delicate vessels. Okay. So there, there's a wide range of, of that. There's a lot of vascularity and it ranges a lot in size and shape. I think that's one really helpful feature. Okay. Number two, like I said, the background tends to be this kind of pale, edematous sort of looking myxoid, and it has very fine collagen. See these little thin wisps of collagen? That's pretty characteristic, I think. All right. These cells are relatively nondescript. They're kind of uh, spindle to stellate um, uh, in appearance. They can have kind of round to oval nuclei and they're very sparse, um, hypocellular. Um, you can sometimes get slightly more cellular areas, but um, usually they're kind of low cellularity like this. All right. So all of those features together are uh, characteristic of a uh, deep or formerly known as aggressive angiomyxoma. Oh wait, there's one other thing I wanted to point out. And this is a, a little pearl that, um, that I learned from my mentor, Mark Edgar, who is another, another soft tissue pathology mentor who taught me lots of really great little visual 
uh, you know, subtle clues about soft tissue tumors. And he said that what you often see, and it's been described by others, but what you often see are these little thin wisps or small thin fascicles of, of pink spindle cells that look like little smooth muscle bundles. I think that's probably what they are. They're little wisps of smooth muscle that kind of stretch out across the background. And a lot of times you'll see them kind of uh, coming, arising off the edge of a vessel. Kind of, we can get that here. Let's get it in focus. And you can kind of see this little wisp of muscle right around the vessel. And then they kind of spin off and swirl out into the background of the tumor. And I do find that to be um, relatively useful characteristic finding. Ah, here it is uh, right here. And there's this nice uh, thin wisp of pink spindled cells spinning, kind of swirling out into the, the loose uh, background here. And now this, this tumor is of interest because uh, Dr. Laskin, one of your amazing faculty, uh, wrote one of the seminal papers about this entity, actually. And uh, he's, he's published, uh, in fact, about multiple entities that we're going to look at today. So I know he's uh, here in the audience. He said he may skip out for some frozen sections or something. So it's always a little bit nerve wracking when the person who like described an entity is sitting in the audience when you're giving a lecture. So uh, hopefully I don't make any uh, huge uh, faux pas. If so, we'll, we'll find out later. Uh, I did put a couple slides in, even though you don't need to see all of them, just because it's a, such an uncommon entity. And um, I also wanted to highlight the variability in pattern, right? This is all from the same tumor. And you can see there's areas with fat, there's areas with a bit more collagen, there's areas that are a bit more mixoid. Um, and uh, so that variability is good to know about because uh, that can sometimes be uh, can, can create a challenge. I think this last one is also really nice because look, look, this, this piece here is super vascular, tons of blood vessels, looks quite different from that first, uh, first slide I showed you. And then here on the same, the same slide, another piece of tissue from the tumor, much more edematous and mixoid. And also this is a feature you sometimes see is you can see hemorrhage um, in the, uh, the background of the tumor. There can be extravasated erythrocytes, and that's a feature you can see in a variety of different mixoid tumors, things that have a lot of mixoid change, sometimes get hemorrhage from the vessels. And again, look at those little wisps of smooth muscle. So immunostains, I feel like this is really mostly an H&E diagnosis, but if you want to do immunostains, usually Desmond is going to be expressed um, a lot of times in these. And like for the majority of the, the genital stromal tumors, uh, estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor are usually positive. There is more recently a molecular finding. HMGA2 is a gene that has rearrangements in, a, in not all of, the, of these, but in a subset of deep angiomyxomas, you can have HMGA2 rearrangements. So in a difficult case, that could be uh, useful. But I think the thing is, I see, I see when I've looked at consult cases, I feel like people often send um, any genital spindle cell thing they see, if it's got any edema or myxoid change, they have a tendency to be worried about aggressive angiomyxoma because of that name, I think, because of the aggressiveness. And they often often get sent in for consult. So, you know, uh, large skin tags or, you know, acrocordons are also known as fibroepithelial polyps. Um, in the general area can get a lot of edema in them or, or some myxoid change. And so sometimes people will send those in. Sometimes you can have superficial angiomyxoma, which is also known as cutaneous myxoma. Those uh, sometimes occur in the vulva in the genital region, but they're small and superficial. So I think that's the, the most helpful thing to me, aside from all the features we just talked about, is if the thing, if the mass is two centimeters and in the subcutis or the dermis, it's probably not a deep angiomyxoma. They are, these are usually large, deep masses that infiltrate into the pelvic soft tissue. And again, that's why they're uh, potentially problematic. And then let me show you um, a, uh, an example just for, for contrast. This is a cutaneous myxoma, which is basically synonymous with superficial angiomyxoma. To me, aside from the fact that this is a small circumscribed subcutaneous nodule, they look relatively different. They have they have very thin, delicate branching vessels, so, you know, almost a little bit like the chicken wire vessels that you can see in a myxoid liposarcoma, these very delicate, subtle vessels, not the wide range of thick, thin, and medium-sized vessels that you see in 
in the deep angiomyxoma. And also I feel like there's usually a much more blue, abundant myxoid background um, in these cutaneous or superficial angiomyxoma. And um, sometimes they have a scattering of neutrophils. I have um, a video about this on my YouTube channel uh, that you can go and check out if you need a review of this entity. So that's just to show you a contrast of what a superficial angiomyxoma would look like um, so that you don't get those confused. Okay, any questions about that one before we move on to case two?